to the glory of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I know many of you and have uh, met some of you in, in recent days, but um, uh, just to repeat, uh, my name is Brad Jones, and I'm the rector at Christ Church Schenectady. Now, um, that name and a couple of dollars might get you a medium coffee at, at McDonald's, but I speak in the name that is above every name. I speak in the name of Jesus in whom there is power and authority, in whom there is truth. My topic today, the, what the Lord's put on my heart to share, is destroying strongholds with truth. Destroying strongholds with truth. And, and I just want to share uh, a word from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am humble and face to face with you, but bold towards you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on, showing against some who suspect us of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Destroying strongholds. According to what Paul has, has written there, uh, he would envision strongholds as any word or anything that would come against the truth of God. That, that any argument, uh, every lofty opinion that would be raised against the knowledge of God is, is a stronghold. And, and so... And so he's speaking of, of, of destroying, if you will, the lies, uh, the lies that can, can dissuade people, can distract people, can lead people away from the truth that is found in God and in Christ Jesus. It's important to, to consider that, 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 that destroying strongholds is, is really about, uh, is really about uh, Com being complicit with Satan, the father of lies, as you heard in the gospel passage from John. Satan, the father of lies. And it, indeed, we, we find ourselves uh, surrounded uh, by, by lies in so many, so many different ways. Uh, it really doesn't take uh, very long in any given day or any given week to come across uh, some lies that are being spoken, whether on social media or uh, between friends or family members. And, and when you go into the schools nowadays, the, 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 the cheating and, in fact, uh, in, in effect, the deception that is taking place in schools right now, uh, regardless of what may or may not be taught, there is, it's everywhere. I, I even have it on authority that some politicians lie. Can you believe it? Democrats and Republicans, uh, no, they're both capable of that. In an article that um, she just has written just a couple of months ago, a woman by the name of Megan Trapp writes this about spiritual strongholds. Uh, by the way, stronghold is only, it, it's only used once in the New Testament, and it's at that point point that I just read from, from 2 Corinthians, uh, and, and, um, and she says this about strongholds. She says, spiritual strongholds show up in many forms in believers' lives. I'm talking about believers' lives, not just the general public, but believers' lives. Addictions to drugs, gambling, pornography, promiscuity, overeating, 
isolation, and shopping are just a few examples. All these behaviors are rooted in idolatries formed because of lies that have been believed. Lies about worldly things being able to save us or that God is faithless to deliver. All of these behaviors are condemned in different places throughout the Bible. So the examples of, of strongholds are, are, I'm sure, limitless, and, and you can come up with, with some of your own. Um, but there's one there that uh, I think she went from, from preaching to meddling personally, and, and maybe for a couple of us here, what I'm about to say may go from preaching to meddling. But um, uh, when I was a youth pastor at a church in, in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, we wanted to raise funds to uh, bring a team of youth down to... Uh, to Costa Rica. Uh, we were working with a, a little home church that was now ready to expand and become a, a full-fledged uh, church. They just purchased a house and we were to go down and convert this house to be a, a place of, of worship, the, to be their church. And, and so to raise money for, for this mission trip, uh, we had a, a number of creative uh, uh, fundraisers. Uh, one was on, on St. Francis Day uh, when we had the blessing of, of, of animals. Uh, the, we followed that up with a youth, uh, youth-driven pet wash. And, and, uh, and, and so uh, dogs were $5 and cats were $25. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and then another one, uh, somebody, somebody in the congregation had some connection with um, uh, a company that, that manufactured a, a certain type of uh, manure called BioGrow. And this uh, sort of newly developed uh, 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 fertilizer uh, was made primarily from chicken manure. And so for week after week, we were peddling chicken poop to the congregation uh, to help us <laughs> fund our, our trip to, uh, to Costa Rica. Can I say that here? Uh, anyway. Um, but um, the, the, the one that was most successful, the one that was most successful was the Fatathon. And the Fatathon uh, took place during Lent. And here's how it worked. Uh, I was one of three clergy in, in, this, uh, in this particular parish, uh, three priests. And, and so uh, on Shrove Tuesday, uh, the other two clergy and myself and my wife joined in. After having a nice big pancake dinner on Shrove Tuesday, we all went to the scales and we weighed in and our weight was recorded. And so from that point on, the youth were collecting pledges as to how much cumulative weight would be lost among the four of us by, by Easter. And, and so, um, and so we, you know, we, we did this thing and we weighed in and, and off we went and the, the, the pledges would, I mean the youth would get pledges, maybe 25 cents a pound or a dollar a pound or whatever it was that people would pledge and they were get, getting these things filled up and people were eager to see how much weight the clergy uh, and, and my wife would lose. So uh, on Sunday mornings, now remember this is deep south, this is Montgomery, Alabama, um, Sunday mornings between the early and, and the later service, they served breakfast. Now, eating in the South, if you are not familiar, eating in the South brings new meaning to food groups. And, and <laughs> biscuits with sausage gravy is a food group unto itself. And, and, and so these breakfasts that they served, uh, these, were not, um, these were not dietary um, uh, breakfasts they served. And so uh, as I went, as I typically did, after the early service, I went down and, and started uh, putting some food on, on my plate. And there were two mothers of some of the youth in the youth group that were part of this fundraiser. They were watching me. And so I, I put some eggs on. I, I'm all right there. Then I went for the bacon. They said, you know, that's got a lot of fat and calories. And so, okay. And then I went for the biscuits, and the, uh, uh, they 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 shook their finger at that, and I knew this was going to be a very long Lent. Uh, and 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 the eyes of the church were on me, and and the others. And do you know, in in 40 days, I lost over 20 pounds uh, because because people were watching me. But here's what happened: they were speaking truth, not a truth I wanted to hear, but they were speaking truth about that breakfast I was about to serve up, and the impact that would have on my weight and uh, my ability to, to lose weight. 
So in my own case, uh, overeating, that's one of the strongholds in my life. I love food. I'm from New Orleans. Come on. I, I, I love I love to eat, and, and you can tell, look at me, I haven't miss, missed that many meals in my life, and, and, and yet it is a place where the, this body of mine, this temple of, of the living God that, that is this body is, is something that is damaged. It is, is something that uh, suffers when I give in to things such as overeating. But here's the thing about strongholds in our lives whether it's overeating whether it's uh, addiction to alcohol drugs uh, whether it's pornography whether it's um, any any number of strongholds at the the base at the root of these strongholds there are lies that we not only tell ourselves but they're lies we believe now, we know that Satan is the father of lies, but do you know that we have the capacity to, to lie to ourselves without Satan's help? He may be the source and root of all that is deceptive and, and false, but, but there are times that we, we take on ourselves these, these lies that we tell ourselves. Uh, another example, for years and years, um, <laughs> well... I'll give you a little clue. Uh, there's, there's, um, uh, used to be, uh, I had a, 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 my very first ATM password. Um, uh, it involved, uh, the, it was RLB1. RLB1 stood for running little behind one. And my wife was RLB2, running a little behind two. Uh, I had a, a tendency to, to be running a little behind. And part of that, I can blame our kids who were never ready on time or whatever. But, but part of it was just my own my own uh, tendency to sort of push the boundaries and, and leave at the last minute when I needed to be somewhere. And so I started setting my watch ahead by five minutes so that I would sort of fool myself into thinking that I had a little more time than I did. And, and the problem is I knew this little trick in my own mind that I had come up with myself, but I, I, still, I still would live by, you know, just setting the watch ahead to continue to try to, to, to you know, stay on time and and I don't know, it was probably 10, 12 years ago, I realized I was just lying to myself. That I, I was really just practicing deception to myself, and, 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 and it really wasn't working that well anyway. But from then on, I have always set my watch according to exact uh, the time that shows up on my cell phone. Uh, I set it to the, to the accurate time. Uh, it's just one little way I stopped deceiving myself. But, but there are so many ways like that that we, we do that. The alcoholic who says, oh, it's, I can have one drink. That won't, that won't hurt anything. Uh, the, the, uh, when I was uh, in an earlier time struggling with sexual addiction and pornography, I, I would think, well, what I'm doing, nobody's going to know, and it doesn't hurt anybody. It was just a lie that I was telling myself, and, and, and I, was, I was believing it enough to, to, to keep on operating in this deception. Lies we tell ourselves, lies we believe. In his first letter, Timothy, um, or the first letter to Timothy says, Now the Spirit expressly says, that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. He's speaking of, of those within the church who will walk away from the faith because of deception, because of, of lies that they've come to believe by those who are insincere. And, and, and so much of what's happening within the body of believers, so much of what takes place within the church in, in these lives is, is that, that we, we try to accommodate things that we want to have as true, but the Word of God says they're not true. Things that we want to believe and, and, and we, we want to, 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 to find ourselves faithful to God's Word, but we will distort and... And, and in effect lie to ourselves, sort of like setting the watch ahead, just so that we can feel a little better about ourselves. 
I don't know how many of you are familiar with Neil Anderson. He's, he's uh, written a number of books over the years, and, and one, uh, probably one of his better uh, read and, and sold books is The Bondage Breaker. And, um, and, and there's uh, a, a lot of, of good stuff in there, but one of the things that he confronts is the, the common conception uh, within some in the church, among the believers, that freedom from spiritual bondage is a result of a power encounter with demonic forces. Listen to what he says. Freedom from spiritual conflicts and bondage is not a power encounter, it's a truth encounter. Satan is a deceiver, and he will work undercover at all costs. But the truth of God's word exposes him and his lie. His demons are like cockroaches that scurry for the shadows when the light comes on. Satan's power is in the lie. And when his lie is exposed by the truth, his plans are foiled. He writes, when I was a boy on the farm, my dad, my brother, and I would visit our neighbor's farm to share produce and labor. The neighbor had a yappy little dog that scared the socks off me. When he came barking around the corner, my dad and brother stood their ground, but I ran. Guess who the dog chased? <laughs> I escaped to the top of our pickup truck while the little dog yapped at me from the ground. Everyone except me could see that the little dog had no power over me except what I gave it. Furthermore, it had no inherent power to throw me up on the pickup. It was my belief that put me up there. Because I chose to believe a lie, I essentially allowed that dog to use my mind, my emotions, my will, and my muscles, all of which were motivated by fear. Finally, I gathered up my courage, jumped off the pickup, and kicked a small rock at the mutt. Lo and behold, it ran. <laughs> Satan is like that yappy little dog, deceiving people into fearing him more than God. His power is in the lie. He is the father of lies who deceives the whole world. And consequently, the whole world is under the influence of the evil one. He can do nothing about your position in Christ, but if he can deceive you into believing his lies about you and God, you will spend a lot of time on top of the pickup truck. You don't have to outshout him or outmuscle him to be free of his influence. You just have to out-truth him. Believe, declare, and act upon the truth of God's word and you will thwart Satan's strategy. If you were to do a word study in the Bible on the word truth, uh, do it, I, I challenge you to this. Uh, look up everywhere in, in, your, in your concordance where the word truth comes. And everywhere where it speaks of God's truth everywhere. The only article that you will find about it or find with, with truth is the article the. You will not find anywhere in the scripture where it says a truth. It simply says the truth. Jesus would say again and again in the old language, verily, verily, I say unto you, but more recent translations, truly, truly, I say unto you, or sometimes in some translations, he would say, I speak the truth, and then he would speak his word. And so when you look at the dichotomy between, between lies and the truth throughout scriptures, you, you see at the very beginning of the scriptures that Satan, the deceiver, convinced Eve of a lie and caused her to doubt what God had said, which was the truth. And so she gave in to his lies and him to his temptation, and then as did Adam, and then began the fall. And then we go all the way throughout Scripture, come to the end of Scripture in the book of Revelation. Do you know that the word sin is not mentioned once in the book of Revelation? But it, what it does speak of, and toward the very end, uh, it, it gives description of, of Satan, the one who deceives the people of God, being thrown into the lake of fire. So from beginning to end, you have the father of lies, the, the deceiver himself. We have the, the, the start of his impact on, on humanity and you and I. And then at the very end, you see, you see God's truth prevail. The truth. 
And, and there's this, this whole progression of, of the, the word of truth that, that, that is spoken. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just start with the New Testament. Um, and we heard this in the eighth chapter of, of John. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A little later he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then in John 16, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Right? And then John 17, I do not ask thee to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. In his letter to the church at Ephesus, when describing the, the armor of God, the spiritual armor, stand therefore, stand firm therefore, having girded your loins with truth. And then in his letter to the church at Philippi, after sharing with them uh, how it is we can uh, pray uh, on all occasions, and, and, and he speaks of the peace that passes understanding, then he says this, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is true, think on these things. In the ministry of healing, and particularly on the, the influence that, that um, our, our health and our, our disease can have in our lives. There's something so important about proclaiming the truth into whatever our situation may be. Now, there have been people uh, at, at our church and, and other churches I've been to that have come up for prayer week after week, month after month, year after year, asking prayer for the same condition, the same thing again and again and again. Now, sometimes it's just uh, a, a matter of the Lord tearing for a season, for his reason, to, to bring the healing or to, to show that person um, uh, more and more how to trust in him for the day-to-day -day while waiting on that healing to take place. But sometimes, sometimes people coming for prayer are are deceiving themselves or have been deceived in a way that needs to be exposed, that needs to be brought into the light. There's a lie that we sometimes tell ourselves that it's okay. It's okay to act this way. It's okay to have another drink when you know that you are under the stronghold, the deceptions that come against the word of God. It's okay to, 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 to tell that lie just to get yourself out of trouble. It's okay to, to, um, to hold on to your resentment, your unforgiveness against someone. The lies are, are, are as numerous as the stars, but, but we've all participated in them in one way or another. What the Lord put on my heart this morning is, is that the strongholds that we've been given divine power to demolish, to destroy, to break down. The word for stronghold can also be used as fortress. These fortresses we build up around ourselves to protect us maybe from being hurt again in the way that we've been hurt before or, or to protect us from people knowing about what we really think. Or, or what our behavior is in the dark. These fortresses that we bring, the word of God, the truth of God, tells us that we have divine power to destroy such strongholds. And that power comes by the truth of God's word, the promises that he makes to every one of us, the, the power to heal, the power to save, the power, the same power that brought Jesus from the dead, the same power that resurrected Jesus has been made available to you and I to overcome any and all strongholds that would come into our life. So perhaps today might be a, a day of self-examination. Uh, what is it that you have chosen to believe? W what lies have you told yourself 
that would keep you from receiving the full freedom that Jesus brought. He says, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. He was talking to, to religious leaders who, who were believing lies and would not believe the truth that was in Jesus. But we here know the truth that is in Jesus. And the fact that he has given us access to divine power to tear down, break down, destroy, demolish any and all strongholds. Beloved, that's indeed good news. So what lies perhaps have you and, and I participated in? Perhaps very subconsciously. Perhaps it's a sort of a promise we made to ourselves long ago that we'd forgotten we'd, we'd made. What lies have we believed that are counter to the truth that is in Christ Jesus? It is the truth that will set us free. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and for the truth that is in your word. We thank you, Lord, for the truth that is Jesus. Lord, by your spirit, I pray that you would, uh, you would reveal to us any place of deception, any place where we have... Uh, we have, have not moved forward with healing or, or deliverance because we have chosen the lie over your truth. Lord, I pray you reveal it and heal it. I pray that today might be a day of, of setting captives free here in this place. That today would be a, a day where we experience the greatest freedom that you've offered us. The freedom to live in you in perfect freedom. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's healing in your power. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. And all God's people said amen.